head around the Inside Politics table, ask our great reporters to get you out ahead of the big political news just around the corner. Abby? So chaos is swirling all around this campaign. The Republican Party is in crisis. WikiLeaks emails, the, the scandals of the 90s are back. But the Clinton campaign is determined to stay focused on one issue, the economy. And that's because these wishy-washy Republican voters and independents who have been kind of flailing back and forth throughout this election need to be locked down. And they need to do that with something to vote for, not just against. So they've been putting out some new tax cuts. We're going to be seeing her talking more to uh, this sort of like middle America group. They need to lock this down so they can move on and try to expand the map. They will only do that if they feel more comfortable about where they are with the, the moderates and independents. Policy. Policy? <laughs> really? Policy? Okay, <laughs> Matt. <laughs> Uh, the election's not over, but there's already a lot of conversations about the aftermath. And one relationship uh, to watch is Elizabeth Warren and Hillary Clinton. Um, we, uh, my colleague Annie Linsky, dug through these John Podesta emails and found a lot of angst over Elizabeth Warren in those within the Clinton campaign. They were thinking at one point about changing Clinton's policy on um, banking regulations to appease Elizabeth Warren. Some of this was good primary politics, uh, but it also sort of showed the degree to which the Clintons were nervous about Warren. And um, I think in the aftermath of this, uh, Warren could be a, a voice in opposition to Hillary Clinton uh, and not always on the same side, uh, sort of a thorn in, in her side. So I think that's a relationship to watch uh, and sort of see whether there's going to be any Democratic Party revolt uh, you know, against Clinton at some point, the way that we're seeing a lot of the internal turmoil in the Republican Party. That one will be fun. Those emails are really interesting. Glenn? One of the really striking things that happened at the second debate is as soon as it was over in the spin room, I heard the same expression over and over again. He stopped the bleeding. Well, the perception inside that, that building from the spinners and from the reporters, I think, was at variance to what people at home saw. And the polls taken after, the legitimate ones, not the, you know, not the snap ones, uh, showed that most of the viewers either gave Hillary Clinton a, a narrow edge or ruled it a tie. This is what the Clinton campaign is really most afraid of, apart from the WikiLeaks disclosures, is that we in the media are going to try to turn this into a horse race uh, and not just sort of let her cruise to the, to the finish. And you know, as you know, Hillary Clinton is not the world's best closer. Uh, history would prove you right on that point, sir. <laughs> Mono? <laughs> uh, speaking of after the election, Paul Ryan, we talked a lot about his challenges with Donald Trump. He's going to have a lot of challenges internally with his own Republican conference. Uh, even if he does hang on to the majority, he's probably going to lose seats. Uh, there's going to be a much narrower majority. A lot of those moderates may lose. The conservatives may come back emboldened. A lot of these members from the House Freedom Caucus there may get some more members from the House Freedom Caucus who will make it very hard for him to compromise. And then you look on the Senate side, uh, it's going to be a narrow majority either way. They're Democrat-controlled or Republican-controlled. And if Hillary Clinton is in the White House, how does, that, how does Ryan navigate all those landmines cutting deals, dealing with his uh, conservative conference, uh, at the same time, maybe even looking out for a possible 2020 run. So uh, his challenges maybe look difficult right now, but could get a lot worse. And multiplying. I'll close with this. Defending Donald Trump is taking some Republicans down a path they may regret. Take Alabama Senator Jeff Sessions. He's an Army veteran, a former federal prosecutor, former Alabama attorney general, a law and order conservative, a devout Christian, and a former Sunday school teacher. But in an interview with the Weekly Standard, Session was asked about that tape where Trump brags of forcing himself on women, including grabbing what we describe to our children as private parts. Now, Trump used a different term. I won't repeat it. Here's what Session said of walking up to a woman and grabbing her without her consent. I don't characterize that as sexual assault. I think that's a stretch. Forget politics for a moment, Senator. Well, what about your daughters and your seven granddaughters? Saying Trump is a better choice than Hillary Clinton? That's one thing. Saying what he described in that tape is not sexual assault? Forgive me, Senator. That's an outrage.